This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone. And welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Why do we see and experience a rise of anti-Semitism around the world, but especially in Europe. Is there any connection, any relevance when it comes to Jesus Christ's prophecies that there would be a worldwide persecution of the Jewish people just prior to his return? Before going on, I'd like to ask you to request a free copy of our booklet, The Fall and Rise of the Jewish People, which tells you very clearly what is in store for the Jewish people, what's going to happen to them prior to and subsequent to Christ's return. In addition to that, please remember that Jesus Christ was a Jew. Christianity is built on the foundation of the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament apostles, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. There is a clear-cut connection between the Old and the New Testament, and many people have really not a quite correct understanding as to who Jesus Christ really was and what he taught and how he lived. I have a booklet here, also free for the asking, Jesus Christ, a Great Mystery. To many, Jesus Christ is a mystery. They believe in Christ, but even already at the time of Paul, he was warning that many would come and did already come to preach another Jesus. And he said, of course, this kind of worship and belief in a false Jesus, a counterfeit, is not going to give you and bring you salvation. And then a third booklet, Do You Know the Jesus of the Bible? Which goes into how Jesus lived, what he said, what he believed, what he did, and quite frankly, what he is doing today. So I will announce these three booklets again at the end of this program, but I'd like to go back to the initial question, why so much anti-Semitism in Europe in particular? You might not even agree with me on that. You might say, oh, well, it's not that bad. Jews have always been hated to a certain extent, but is there really an increase? Well, I'd like to give you a few examples. Here's an article by Politico dated March 4, saying this. Anti-Semitism is back in Europe. This particularly European pathology never truly went away, of course, but it had been confined after the Holocaust to the far-right fringes of society. Now, the numbers of high-profile incidents and violent attacks are multiplying. And France, for instance, is a good example. Not only is this disease back, it is being weaponized by nationalist governments and parties on both sides of the political spectrum. The rise of extremist parties has acted like a green light for the continent's anti-Semitism. The danger goes beyond the physical. Issues that on the face have nothing to do with Jews, the migration crisis or a protest movement sparked by fuel prices, suddenly became all about them. Centuries-old stereotypes have reappeared. The conniving Jewish financier, the all-powerful Jewish conspirator, accused of buying political influence or acting as a globalist, pulling the levers of power in pursuit of enrichment. The common theme, notice carefully, Jews are others who do not belong. In European society. The article goes on to say, in the West, the danger comes from left-wing opposition and from the street. In the UK, anti-Semitism is tearing apart the opposition Labour Party. Muslim critics of the Jewish state are often guilty of extending their criticism to all Jews. In the former communist bloc, Right-wing nationalist politicians propagate anti-Semitism themselves. Many of the region's governments, led by Hungary, have rehabilitated their wartime criminals and minimized their country's guilt in the destruction of their Jewish 
communities. Much more could be said about this topic, but I like to quote now from an article by JTA, dated March 4. Participants in a street celebration in the Belgian city of Alst paraded giant puppets of Orthodox Jews and a rat atop money bags. The group Wiss Moyen created the two puppets as their 2019 theme for the Alst Carnival, the local edition of celebrations that take place throughout parts of Europe and Latin America annually in anticipation of Lent, the 40-day period before Easter. They titled the work Shabbat Year, Sabbath Year. One of the puppets is grinning while smoking a cigar, extending a hand, presumably to collect money. That puppet has a white rat on his right shoulder. Both puppets are standing on gold coins and have money bags at their feet. In the background is a round window, reminiscent of the architecture of many European synagogues. In 2013, a different group designed for the Alst Carnival a float resembling a Nazi railway wagon used to transport Jews to death camps. The people who designed the float, known as the FTP group, marched near the float, dressed as Nazi SS officers and Orthodox Jews. A poster on the wagon showed Flemish Belgian politicians dressed as Nazis and holding canisters labeled as containing Cyclone B, the poison, used by the Nazis to exterminate Jews in gas chambers in the Holocaust. Now let me just say, something like that is truly shocking. But at the same time, we have to understand, this is not just coming out of nowhere. Those carnival organizers viewed the float ahead of time and approved of it. Now, later they apologized after workers had spent hours to design them. Aish.com added on March 5. The Belgian city of Alts is only a short drive from the gleaming modern towers that house the European Union in central Brussels. But on Sunday, the picturesque town seemed to belong to a previous era as a grotesque anti-Semitic parade float promenaded through the center of town, looking like something out of the Middle Ages or Nazi times. Anti-Jewish feeling is rising across Europe and beyond. The outrageous float in Ast is not a wake-up call. It's more like an alarm we have been hearing after hitting the snooze button a hundred times. In too many quarters, it's become acceptable to make fun of Jews or to express blatant anti-Semitism. I'd like to give you one more example. This is an article by CNN, which was published on March 5, talking about a situation in the Netherlands. The D. Dock Worker statue stands as a permanent reminder of the day Amsterdam came together on February 25, 1941, to protest against the anti-Semitic laws imposed on its Jewish citizens by the Germans. By the end of World War II, about 75% of the Dutch Jewish community had been wiped out. At a time when anti-Semitism is on the rise in Europe, the vandalizing of the statue last week caused headlines inside and outside the country. The nature of the vandalism, the green and yellow paint on the statue, and the painting of green swastikas on the street suggested a blurring of the lines between anti-Semitism and the hatred of the city's football club Ajax, or Ajax Amsterdam. And of course, in the United States, we would call it the soccer club. Throughout the Netherlands and much of Europe, Ajax is known as a Jewish club. The vandalism shone a light of the complicated and often uneasy relationship between Ajax, the Jewish community, and the anti-Semitism that it often attracts.
Why is that so? Who is behind all of that? Why did Jesus Christ warn of a worldwide persecution of the Jewish people? Well, we are talking about the time which is called in the Bible the Great Tribulation. And at the beginning of that Great Tribulation and beyond, there is a martyrdom prophesied. Of course, not just of the Jews, but also of true Christians. And let me also state that in times past, far too many times, Christians have looked the other way, have not really done anything to stand up against the persecution of the Jews and the rise of anti-Semitism. This is particularly true for the great big Christian organizations, those big churches. They have collaborated even with the Nazis, with Mussolini, rather than helping their Jewish brethren. Something like that is going to happen again in a much more exaggerated, I would say, and terrible, all-encompassing way. Not just in Europe, not just in Europe, but especially in Europe, and there are reasons for that. Again, do you know the Jesus of the Bible? Jesus Christ, a great mystery. And, of course, the fall and rise of the Jewish people. We'll give you insight. Did you know that the Jewish people have a prophetic role to play in the near future, including building a third temple in Jerusalem, which is absolutely necessary so that biblical prophecy can be fulfilled? And more and more people are now talking about building that third temple. I talked briefly about the Great Tribulation. Did you know that the Great Tribulation is going to be caused by Satan the devil? Satan has tremendous hatred for the Jews and for true Christians. And he wants to wipe them out from the face of the earth. As when you read the Old Testament, he has tried to do this many times before. He will try it again. But Jesus Christ will return to put an end to those terrible days. You have to stand watch and we will help you doing that. In the meantime, Please read our free booklets, and until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.